Hello to all the viewers in the name of the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. As you have been seeing a series on the doctrine of church, why God has designed the concept of church and what is God's expectation out of the doctrine of church. Today we see many churches are not living according to the design of God, not understanding what is the God's purpose in the concept of the church. So I have made few series of videos. I would like each one of you to walk through all the videos so that you understand what is the God's design of church. Today we are going to deal with the topic of the same doctrine of church which is church being evangelical and missional. So why church has to be evangelical and missional? So let us go to the background so that you have a bigger picture of the concept of the church. So when God created this entire creation, as we see in Genesis first chapter, uh, He created all the creation and in Genesis 2, God has placed this entire creation in the hands of Adam and Eve and He said to Adam and Eve to rule this earth. But the moment Satan came and deceived Adam and Eve, the moment sin came into this world through Adam and Eve, this entire creation is taken over by Satan from the hands of Adam and Eve. So what I'm trying to tell here is God placed this entire creation in the hands of Adam and Eve and Satan has taken over it from the hands of Adam and Eve because of the sin. So we see this from the scripture 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The God of this world has blinded the eyes of the people. We also see in 1 John 5.19 also that this entire world is run by the power of the devil. So we also see in Romans 8.22 this entire creation, not only just the mankind. When God cursed this entire creation because of the sin of Adam and Eve, it is not just limited to Adam and Eve, but also this entire creation is cursed by God because of the sin. God is a God of just and He doesn't tolerate any sin. So He cursed, He punished this entire creation. And that is the reason because of the sin, this entire creation is groaning for deliverance. And that deliverance tend to come at Jesus' second coming as we see in Revelation 21. The new heaven and new earth tend to come at Jesus' second coming. That is the restoration of this entire creation. The Satan wants all this mankind to perish into hell and fill the hell. But God being a God of love and mercy, He wants to send this entire mankind to heaven through the atoning sacrifice of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is looking at army, the agents of God, which are nothing but the people who received Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, to be the agents of God to wage a war against Satan's army. That is what we tend to see in Ephesians 6.12. Our battle is with evil forces, which means our struggle, our battle is on behalf of God with Satan and Satan's army. So this is going on ever since the creation. God is expecting the churches to be evangelical and missional. So understanding with this as a background, let us move what is an evangelical church. Evangelical derives from the Greek word evangelion, which means the gospel, which means the good news. Evangelical applies to person, church, organization. And the main focus of being evangelical is to introduce Jesus Christ as the Savior to this world. It is Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Let me read it for you. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Here you see that go is a commandment from God. Make disciples is a commandment of God. And baptize them in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit is a commandment of God. In the single scripture you see there are three commandments. So if you claim to love God, 
then you are supposed to be obedient to his commandments. So, are you obedient to his commandments by preaching the gospel? When was the last time that you preached the gospel to your neighbor, to your office, or to your family members, or in the streets? So if you are not preaching the gospel, then you are not following the commandment of God, which is sin. Yes, it is sin. We may be very negligent, we may be very careless that we don't understand God's commandment. The churches are failing today. More than 90% of the churches, they only do it as a program or service on Sunday. And the churches do not practice, nor preach, nor teach to go and preach the gospel to the people. And one more understanding of the people where there is a problem is, many people think doing evangelism is pastor's job. But here, you clearly see Jesus is telling to his disciples. Are the disciples pastors? They are just the followers of Lord Jesus Christ. Are you not the follower of Lord Jesus Christ? Are you not a disciple of Lord Jesus Christ? If you are a disciple of Lord Jesus Christ and follower of Lord Jesus Christ, then Jesus is talking to you right now. You have to be evangelical. You are supposed to preach the gospel. You are supposed to go to all the nations, to the ends of this earth. And you also see in Romans 10, 14, let me read what Paul is telling here. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? So, how will unbelievers believe in Jesus Christ unless they heard about him? That is what Paul is telling in the first part of the scriptures. So, if you don't go and tell, how will they believe? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? If you don't go and preach to the unbelievers, how will they listen? How will they believe? If you don't preach, how will they believe? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Unless you are sent, unless you go out from your homes, how will the people who are the fallen world, who lost the fellowship with God because of the sin as we are Adam's descendancy, how will people listen and understand and believe and if someone doesn't go and preach? Paul tends to tell how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. This is an understanding to summarize, church has to be evangelical. Church has to preach the gospel. Church is supposed to introduce the Savior to this world. We saw that this entire world lost the fellowship with God, or alienated from God, or separated from God, unless you go and preach. How will they know? If Paul would have not preached the gospel to the Gentiles, then you and me would have not received the gospel. If Thomas would have not come into the first century to Cochin in India, you and me would have not received the gospel. So preaching gospel is a command, is an ordinance from God where every person, every individual, every church, every person as an agent of God is supposed to preach the gospel. As I said, I'm relating it back to the background that there's a conflict which is going on between God and the Satan and God is looking at agents of God to fight this battle on behalf of God as God's army with the Satan. We saw in Ephesians 6. So, do you want to be part of the God's army? If you are the chosen person, if you are a saved person, then you are supposed to be part of God's army so that you work according to the purpose defined by God which is to restore this fallen world, which is to reconcile this entire world back to God again through Christ Jesus. That is what you tend to see even in 2 Corinthians 5.15. You are an ambassador. You are an ambassador and your responsibility is to restore this entire... I want to leave you with a thought. If you consider yourself as a saved person and if you think you accepted Jesus as your personal savior, then you ought to be evangelical. 
when the church organizes its principles around being evangelical. So, if you have liked this video, I would request you to please subscribe, like and share it to your friends and neighbors. Thank you.